This is the story of a great water whose strength men conquered, the Zambezi. There have been visions of mastering the torrent's wealth, but the Zambezi, more menacing than dreams, flowed on, untamed. Around it, Africa emerged. But Africa was changing. It wanted more materials, more factories, more of everything. It was searching like every continent across our changing world for a better living for its peoples. For this, it wanted power. What of the Zambezi running wasted to the sea? If we could make the river captive, make its monstrous strength our own, there was the power. We shall spend 125 million pounds before we finish what we start today. But how can you throw a wall across one of the greatest rivers in Africa? How do you do it? We plan to build our wall here. But first, we must carry off the main surge of the river from the working site, so we build a diversion tunnel and a channel. In this channel, we build a coffer dam to protect us as we work on sectors of the main wall. And we leave gaps so that when we demolish the coffer dam, the main flow of the river can rush through. And this leaves us with calmer water on the other side. So, we build a second coffer dam. Inside that, we can press on with the main wall, 2,000 feet long, 405 feet high, until at last, the job is done. And that'll take about five years. And behind it will grow a lake that can change the map of Africa. There's your source of power, Kariba. First to fight your way in, driving roads where roads have never been, following the elephant paths of centuries, struggling to get through to Kariba before the rains planning the inflow of 14 million gallons of the fuel you'll need to build the dam. Then you demolish the coffer dam. Destroy in a fleeting moment what you took months to build. The Great Wall is built out of Africa herself, out of her past, to create her future. Cut and blasted from the living rock, hauled to the crushers in the dusty heat, round the clock and round again. Cement, 350,000 tons of it, carried in special transporters over the escarpment down into the valley. Pumped with compressed air into 80 silos. Mixed into concrete, 250 cubic yards an hour. Above the dam, the river rests. Its time is nearly come. The gaps in the wall are sealed. Zambezi hesitates, stops. And all the ages of Africa seem momently to stop with it. Then the waters spread out backwards out across the valley to make a new lake in Africa, 175 miles long, 20 miles wide. A strange new world appears, an inland sea rising in the wilderness. For the people of the valley, new homes were made before the waters came. 
Not so the animals. As the river rose, the creatures sought the high places, as they had always done in time of flood, and waited for the waters to subside. But this time, the flood came on and on. And so it begins, Operation Noah, a handful of men searching a drowning valley, seeking out every living creature that can be guided to the shore or carried to safety. Now the giant is choked down to a trickle. A single jet is allowed to escape to provide water for the lands between Kariba and the sea. All this time they've been bringing in heavy electrical equipment for the underground power station built in the river bank. This is the setup. Water from the lake drops 360 feet to six heavy duty turbines. They generate electricity, which is stepped up by transformers to 300,000 volts, the highest so far used in Africa. 500 feet above, the switching station stretches its fingers to the sky. From here, the Zambezi's power will flow through steel cord aluminium cables strung in pairs from tall steel towers, a hundred feet and more above the lonely bush. The primal force of ancient Africa channeled to energize the new. Transforms Kariba from a project to the greatest single source of power south of the equator. And with this power, release the spirit of enterprise in man. Release, from here in Central Africa, fresh courage for all those in every land who strive to turn the timeless void of nature into better living for mankind, here and now. <laughs> 